picked the wrong weight to quit sniffing glue. my friends and you are my friend I call you my friends and you are my friends uh, it is the trifecta it is a new month a new week and a new model and we're coming up on the first uh, first days of May in 2022 good lord where has the time gone um, big month happening gotta get ready for Wonderfest I've got uh, visitors coming in from across the pond it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun month so uh, let's get to it. Now, last week I teased a, a different type of spaceship, and uh, here it is. Uh, you have already guessed. It is the Architect. Uh, does that look familiar to you? It ought to. It's an airbrush. Uh, it is the Architect uh, Advanced Research Colonizer Special Edition, and it has a, a WATA badge on it, which is co completely uh, appropriate since... I do use I want to airbrush this now this is not a paid promotion uh, no no I, I don't I don't stoop to doing base uh, a, you know groveling type of commercial endorsements of things that you know if people want to send me free copies that's okay I won't turn them away but you know uh, no um, I only use I want brushes because I like them if I didn't like them I wouldn't use them but that's neither here nor there um, I saw my good friend Rob Schmidt, who coincidentally also is a representative for Iwata, um, he built this kit and it intrigued me and I, and I never thought I'd see one myself, but my local hobby shop had a passel of them. So I decided to grab one because uh, I wanted something unusual, something that's not been uh, seen before, something that there's not that many of, something that sparks a little bit of interest and is not the same old... I hate to say the same old X-Wing, but it's not the same old things we've seen and seen. So I'm looking forward to this and diving into it. Uh, it has all the fun aspects of a Bandai kit. I think it'll go together very quickly. But, oddly enough, or nicely enough, it comes with its own lighting. So that's going to be fun. Uh, I'm, well, this come down to the table. Okay, so we're down here on the table, and I'm going through the, going through the book, and... Um, it's got its own light. It's, like I said, it's got its own light. Got its own USB power source. Um, it's got a neat stand that it comes on. It's like everything you want is already done to this. But I'm also looking at a way that I can paint this up and make it look a little different. Because A, I'm running out of my normal colors. And B, I need to stretch my, my uh, envelope a little bit. More parts, more parts. And I remembered these books from my childhood. Oh, my, my ill-gotten adolescence. Um, these were books that I picked up in the late 70s. And if you don't have any of these books, you might avail yourself of them. Because uh, these got me through a lot of dark times when uh, there wasn't a lot of sci-fi. a lot, of, not Especially not a lot of new sci-fi. Uh, Star Wars had just come out, of course. And that was kicking off the boom. But um, these illustrations... What I liked about them, and what I still like about them, is that they show you the wonders and the joys of just freeform spaceship design that doesn't require that your ship be gray and white. Now, here's a stereotypical metal-colored one, but so that's that, that's the uh, the outlier. But they're more they're more like this, where color and shape and form are much more free-flowing. They're not, well, this one is basic, cl clearly based on the Sydney Opera House, but uh, uh, Miami Spaceport, yeah, it's Sydney Opera House. I remember doing a painting of this one myself when I was younger, taking my own version of that. Just some interesting looking spaceship designs. Um, some of these were used for uh, book covers. Some of these were used for uh, just wild posters. I could see half of these like on a blacklight poster. That's how, how wild some of these are. But uh, just 
shapes, freeform shapes with all kinds of bright colors and striping. And there was there was this one. There, these two were like sister uh, publications, both of uh, Stork Crowley's. Uh, this one also uh, great space battles and uh, nice fictional stories that were written up to go with these paintings. Some are little short stories, but uh, what I liked about them, again, not the most wildly practical of things. Some of them looked like they were 2001 inspired. Some of them looked like they were uh, 1999 inspired. A lot of these, uh, uh, some of these showed up in the uh, Jordaworski Dune um, pre preliminary sketches. This one here, 21st Century Foss, I remember being very formative. Uh, just because of the, the shapes and colors, and they weren't afraid of shapes and colors. And nothing in here screams uh, two nacelles and a warp core. I mean, it's just odd. So those were very formative. I'm going to be using something, something somewhat of what is in here to, when it comes time to be painting up the architect. So uh, that's kind of the background of it. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to, if being this, uh, being that this is so much like a Bandai kit, I'm going to see how much of it I can put together and then take apart to paint, so I can get a better feel for how the uh, the painting needs to be done, rather than going ahead and, and priming uh, priming the, the spur trees like I normally would do. I want to see how the uh, the lighting. See, this is this is to show you what the, the what it's modeled on. There's your airbrush. There's your architect, and it comes out a little bit. Uh, I'm imagining it's going to be about yay big when it's done. So it looks like fun. I probably get it done all in the span of this one week. I can't really take on any uh, big projects this close to Wonderfest because now I'm all about getting ready what I'm going to take. So. Without more, much more yakking, let's get to it. And so the adventure begins. Now the first thing I notice right off the bat is we are back into the lovely territory of having your trees notated by letter. So when it says this is part F2, you go to the F tree. It is so much easier that way. Trust me, I've been doing this for a while. Uh, also, I have learned from the first step that this... Uh, at least this first step is something that uh, has to be glued. It's not like a Bandai kit where it'll all press together and you can uh, quickly undo things. So I don't know if the rest of the kit will be the same way. Refreshingly, we are starting off with the stand. A lot of kits will treat the stand as an afterthought. And this is not only not an afterthought, it is the first thought, but it's a very important part of the presentation because it has the lighting in it and there are things that you can learn about how to do your own wiring and lighting there's the nice uh, circuit that goes in the in the base to light the base up and then this will go up into the post that uh, the kit will uh, rest on so uh, let me get that post out of there now I see uh, where are my tweezers I start the week I clean everything up and then I forget where everything goes get the tweezers out of the or the part out of the tray and it looks like yeah yeah they're right about that the uh, plastic along this edge of this plug needs to be trimmed off so that it will fit up the tube this is some amazingly small wiring but uh, not immune to needing a little bit of uh, tweaking here we're just gonna cut the uh, flange off of this plug so that it will fit up the tube there okay so that goes up the tube now the tube sits like this there it goes like that so let's get the uh, let's get first get the feet on the bottom of the base I have pushed them up through and I'm going to just seal them in place from the top rather than trying to pull them all out again there let the uh, 
capillary action pull that down now we sit and we have to be no we have to be mindful of where the switch is there is a USB port for power and then a switch on the bottom of that so everything looks like it needs to fit in in such a way as to allow that so the looking again the USB port yeah USB port is right there okay yes and that puts the switch here USB port for power and the three lights okay so we've got that and the next step would be to take the clear insert actually I've done I've gone and I've gone and done a badness here that has to go that doesn't go on yet so this is the clear insert that will capture a lot of the light and it uh, let me see it has a break in it that goes around that point so push that up through now I'm not going to be building the whole thing on camera that's that's silly you don't need to see all that but I am going to walk through a couple of these things just to see how it works that looks good that's up through the hole this comes down and clips onto it like that now the post goes in now the post goes in that makes more sense because now we have the post has something to hold on to and then this center goes over top of the whole thing let's see how that's going to fit is that pushed down they're on, yes, there are raised bits here, okay. That goes down like that. Very nice. And then the... You know, cut that, cut that. And then this is the bit that goes up into the ship itself. And... Ta-da! We have a finished base. Now I am dying to hook this up to a computer and light it up. Okay, I had to do a little bit of rejigging on the wires. It's sort of, uh, you know, going around your nose to scratch your elbow, but uh, I wanted to get this on the desk and not have to hang, not have to plug it into the computer, but there is the lighting on the base. Now, it's kind of faint. It's uh, not going to, certainly not going to make anybody need to put on sunglasses, but there you go. That's the lighting that's in the base. It's running off of this USB cord. Um, and we've got a plug to plug the rest of the ship down into it. So uh, that will be the next step. You know, this, this is very, uh, like I said before, it's very nice to see them start with the base. So now we go on to the main body next. Alrighty, so the design of this kit, everything depends on this light bar that's running through the center. And then all of these panels attach to it. And they have little light channel blocks that go in them that uh, feed light out to the little tiny windows. All good, that's fine, that's lovely. Uh, but it does mean that I need to take all of these outer panels that are gonna clip into this, that would be these guys all the way down the line. I need to get those painted before I clip the inner light panels to them because there's no way in God's green earth that I could Put the put the light panels in there and then mask those tiny windows and uh, then paint so I think this this uh, grouping right here this tree and perhaps this one uh, I need to go ahead and do the painting on before I uh, do the assembly on them so uh, I mean I like the way this is working out this is giving me all kinds of nice light in here it's just um, going to be something that, and I wish I could attach the inner light blocks to this central, the central brush, but uh, that's not going to work either, I don't think. So, 
let's uh, let's kind of do a backup, recalibrate, and pull out the panels that are going to have uh, the paint put on them. Boy, that's a lot of P's in one sentence. Pull out the panels that are going to have the paint put on them, and um, get those painted up. Okay, just to let you know, I'm going way out of my comfort zone with the colors here. This uh, I picked some primers that obviously I didn't want to use a big spray can of, uh, of rattle can primer. So I went and looked in my stash and I found these surface primers that I had from Vallejo. And they are two different shades of green. Uh, greenish yellow here in this case. Uh, more of an olive green and a uh, evergreen. So I think that's going to be something uh, like my color scheme because it has brown parts that I will probably leave brown and uh, these are all the clear parts so uh, we're gonna let these dry and then we'll come back and start putting them together I think they'll I think they'll go nicely with the color of lighting that we've got and I can start doing my uh, washes and my aging and my stuff on top of that more fun with color um, I took some of the green, uh, some of the parts that I had primed with the uh, olive green and I went over with a, a rust wash, some of them. Some of them, um, what I think is going to be the majority of the body pieces, I went over with a sea blue uh, wash and we're going to let those dry and then we're going to come back and uh, see how it all goes together because it's entirely possible because I'm basically when I'm doing these I am just running them across with a brush and letting the paint suck into the cracks in the seams but it's entirely possible that some of these parts when you put them together uh, they're not going to be side by side they're going to be uh, you know one might be vertical to the other one or perpendicular to the other one so um, that necessitates that the weathering wouldn't be in the same direction on both of them. So uh, I'm trying to give an overall tone and then once I get the parts together then I can kind of see where the uh, streaks might need to be or if I'm gonna do any um, any chip, not chipping, but you know simulated uh, chrome showing through uh, scratched paint. I need to have it all together to do that to see where the leading edge of the part is. Now I can guess that the leading edge of the part is up here on this one, but I could be completely wrong. I know these ones make up the cup, so I'm assuming that that's going to be the upper edge, but until everything is in its final uh, resting place, I don't know which way any of these pieces are facing. I can presume from the instructions, thank you Mr. Compressor, that uh, these are going along the edges but I don't know whether that's the top and that's the bottom or whether that's the top and that's the bottom. So that's the kind of the kind of the quandary I'm in at this point because I'm just putting down tones of paint on these parts. Now these are the last ones here. I want to put some, I think I want to go with some uh, dark, dark griming on those because uh, they're, they're kind of dark to start with. I've spent the last few minutes having way too much fun with the uh, color shift paints. You knew I was going to dig them out. You knew I had to. Uh, but brushing them on just in little highlight spots here and there, it's giving me quite the nice effect just in spots like this. And um, just in little tiny bitty plates. And the nice thing about them is they, look, they have different uh, properties depending on which color is underneath them. So that's kind of neat. Uh, I've got one last bit that I'm going to worry about and then we're going to walk away from it for a while while all these have a chance to dry and then I will come back and start putting pieces together and we'll really see what we're like what we're dealing with. Okay now that I've got some of these panels uh, at least base painted uh, we can start assembling them to the central shaft of the uh, ship slash brush and they go on like so um, I was struck by this little note in the instructions that I do that I do tend uh, do uh, plan on taking seriously and it says please cherish your neck 
We shall take a break after a long last construction. Please cherish your neck. And I can't think of any wiser words to to uh, end the day with, or, or to end this uh, first morning working on the uh, ship. There you go. Please cherish your neck. Okay, so we've got those side pieces on. And uh, top and bottom A5 and A3 we need next. Now I've got um, what I'm considering a good base coat on. Like I said, we, we will we will no doubt be repainting or painting over some of these spots once we have determined exactly what is publicly visible and what is hidden, you know, after under another part. And like I said, if I have a uh, issue with weathering where uh, some part is going counter to another, then we will have to address that. But A5 and A3 go top and bottom. These are practically identical. Yes, the one with the tubes goes on the bottom. There, those go on. And I can see where we need to do a spot of edge sanding, just where the sprue hit it. We've got A19 going on the front, which was this tiny little, actually it kind of looks like, a, it looks like two different pieces. It looks like the front of the, uh, the very front of the Battlestar Galactica also kind of looks like the Autobot Matrix of Leadership. So we're going to put that on the front, but first I'm going to see if it needs to be a little bit of the sprue removed there we go in the front this would be your spray nozzle in the world of airbrush and yes I understand the irony of using an airbrush to paint an airbrush so let's put some of this to the side. Okay, we got to that. Okay, now we've got a bunch of more side panels that are going to be following down the edge. So I will work on that and we will pick it back up after I have cherished my neck. Okay, I had to power it up before I took a break. And you can see all the tiny little windows in here are lighting up. I quite like this. Now this this also shows me, like what I was saying before, I didn't know that this edge right here was going to be visible. So now I know that I need to put some paint on that. Uh, when it was on the when it was on the the uh, sprue, it looked like that was going to be covered up with something else. So now that I know these things, I can go back in and touch the paint and uh, give this thing a uh, a uh, a highlight pad, you know, dry brushing pass. But I think I'll wait until. Uh, more of it has been built so that I can see where all of those areas are going to be because I spent a lot of time on something that was ended up being covered up by the next piece on top of it and I didn't know that so uh, building it uh, we'll take the rest of it building it as we go good morning everybody it's Tuesday it is day two on the architect advanced research colonizer model. It is also uh, round two because I went back after I saw how everything went together yesterday I went back toward all apart and I've repainted because I didn't like it and no sense putting up life is too short to put up with things you don't like and um, what was bugging me is I went way overboard on the uh, colors and that was because I am out of my comfort zone um, you know, I'm painting a, ostensibly painting a starship that is not gray or silver or white or black or variations thereof. Uh, so I was going nuts on the uh, specialness of it. I was making it too cutesy. So uh, I stripped everything back, which is the saving grace of these Bandai type kits. Although this is not a Bandai kit. This is a 
I think it's Quixing is the name of the company. Let me see if I can. Uh, uh, no, it's all it's all Chinese to me. But um, uh, the, the the long and the short of it was I didn't like it, and no sense putting up with things you don't like. So I stripped everything back. I'm still going for color, but uh, you know perhaps a little bit uh, not not so many variations, not so many. Uh, and I got rid of almost all of the uh, iridescent coloring, the color shift coloring. I kept these two plates here that I kind of like. We're going to leave those. Um, but it was. It was exactly what I was talking about yesterday. Once the parts went together and you saw the relationships of the two of the parts, then I realized how icky it looked. Um, so I've gone back to gone back to uh, formula as it were and I'm um, still keeping a two-tone uh, and in some places a three-tone color scheme um, I really liked I kept what I really liked which was how the the paint cup slash uh, upward engine was looking so that kind of informed how the rest of it was going to be redone and uh, let me go ahead and put and the nice like I said nice thing about this is that I hadn't glued any of the parts together so now I could kind of go through and uh, solidify and glue some parts together because that was also part of what was bugging me yesterday everything had that Bandai squeak uh, sense of impermanence to it that um, it was bending and and, and uh, there's a very well when you get back to this point here that's a very fragile joint and uh, it wasn't it wasn't holding square and all of that. So now that I've kind of figured out what is what, I can go through and actually glue pieces together. And I'm going to start with uh, the uh, the side pieces. Now I did like what I did like out of it was I did like the the, uh, the how the edge was a separate color. This area here is a separate color from the top and the bottom. Uh, it looks a little bit less like a star destroyer and more uh, like some of these uh, some of the ships that were in the books that I showed you yesterday. So now I can go through and start solidifying and gluing pieces together. I think we're going to be in a happier state. Uh, um, all of these will get a, a dry brushing that will bring out some of the detail. But it was just the, my really poor color choices yesterday. I don't mind telling you. I was not happy with those. And um, today I hope to do better. So I'm going to get the last couple of pieces off of the sprues that I needed. And then these can get chucked away. And this is... These are the last bits here that have not been glued down. And I'm leaving the, uh, at least for the time being, I am leaving the, here, the color shift paint on these. There was a whole lot of thing, a whole lot of time I spent yesterday on pieces that ended up being buried way deep in the kit and you never end up seeing again so uh, that perhaps is the most painful lesson of all of this is don't spend time on crap you're not going to see so pull these out kind of uh, now I don't need these pieces now because I'm using the other Uh, the other version of those parts so I'm going to save this off and I don't care what the compressor says I'm going to save those off and then toss the rest of that spur. so that gets me down to just what I've got here uh, these little plugs and joints be sure I'm in camera these little plugs and uh, receptacles um, I know they're a, they're a, they're a necessary evil but that doesn't make them any less evil because um, they're very difficult and they don't give you a lot of slack to uh, plug them in and out. So I want to uh, minimize the amount of time I spend plugging and unplugging those because I know that uh, 
I'm running the risk of having an uncomfortableness happen if uh, these go. All right. Okay, so that's got a... Well, that doesn't have... See, some of these have holes that will keep the uh, circuit boards in the right orientation, and some of them don't. So, first is we're going to start gluing pieces back together. Join me, won't you? Okay, so I've started uh, gluing the parts back in, and I have to say I'm already feeling much better about this because this is now not doing the Bandai squeak. It is uh, more substantial. It is holding its own better. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, a lot of my uh, nervousness about this thing is going away because once you start permanently affixing things down, uh, it does seem to take away a lot of what I was grousing about. So, yay, we will continue on this. And when we get to about here, that will be a good place to stop and cherish my neck again. And uh, we will start uh, thinking about what it's going to take to start doing some of the detail painting on here. Okay, I have done as much assembling as I can right now. I've got the sub-assemblies all done. I am ready to start detailing before I do any addition. These are all solid as a rock now, which is the great thing about gluing as opposed to just press fitting things together. Um, I've got I've got the cores that I've got to fi finish, like this core of the uh, engine slash uh, cup uh, is ready to be a little bit of dry brushing on that. And then we can put the outside plating on that. Same with this rear engine. Uh, I need to do some dry brushing on this before I can put these plates on. So that's kind of where we're sitting there. Uh, I want to do all of this detailing. But I think I'm going to wait till uh, post-lunch to do that. I'm not going to try to rush through all this today. There's yard work that needs to get done. So uh, we're going to let this sit for a bit. Alrighty, I'm starting to put some streaking and grime and weathering into the creases and cracks and even though the brush ship is green it's good to know that dirt is still brown in this universe so uh, I'm just putting in some little washes and some smudges and smears knocking down the uh, not too much I don't I still want to keep the color I don't want to uh, negate all the colorful work that I've done I just uh, am knocking it down and making it perhaps a little um, I don't want to say more ordinary but uh, a little bit more conventional maybe is the word and I'm basing this where on where the uh, the dirt seems to attract in my airbrush which is right at the base of the cup you know how much I hate cleaning an airbrush so uh, this is uh, a good a good therapeutic uh, excuse to dirty up an airbrush. So there. And then I'll come back in with maybe a couple lighter washes, or I'm sorry, a couple lighter uh, uh, dry brushing. Yeah, your, your washes should be dark, your dry brushing should be light. So we're just going to let that streak up. And it's also gotten the, uh, um, the, the fact that it's, the, the dirt is a unifying color is helping this two-tone look. Um, I still like it though. I still like where it's going. Uh, I am almost ready to seal up the uh, top of the cup there. I've got the main engine attached to the front. That certainly needs to be grimed up some. And then we will attach the back half. So uh, it's coming along nicely. Now the, ooh, that's something else I need to do. Now that this has been, uh, I hit it with the, the highlight over the, over the dark blue there, I can go ahead and put these pieces down, get them glued on, and that will allow me to uh, do the griming on them. The only thing I think I'm gonna turn around and paint, repaint by hand are these rings. I'm not wild about these rings. Uh, then and there's a set of them here and there's a set of them up here. 
and I'm not wild about that final color on them so I might have to do some dry brushing over the top to change that uh, cream color but let me get the uh, MEK out and I'll go ahead and put these two pieces down really all I need to do is do the gluing inside these pegs because just like some of the other uh, outer shell work that's going on in the rest of the ship these actually don't touch each other they only attach to the inner core here so go ahead and get those out of the way and there push those down now I can see this almost seems a shame that I've spent so much time in there clean or dirtying that up when it was never going to be shown so I can pull those guys out and I do want to do some griming inside of here and I also want to uh, do some black scorching around here as is typical with all exhausts okay this kit is a veritable uh, it's just crying out for it it's a it's a gold mine for panel accent lining so it is it's begging to be done so I'm just going to panel accent line my little heart out on this kit I can draw in some more detail on the walls behind. I can add more contrast that way. I can panel accent the top half. This is just opening up a whole world and you can hear it's quite the thunderstorm going on outside it's one of those uh, sun shower business things because the sun was shining a second ago and now the lightning comes up I think I need to be in front of a window where I can be watching this now this uh, accent stuff does take a time to dry so I am going to try not to do too much of this and then I can set the whole deal aside and let it uh, take care of itself. And unfortunately, I mean, I only have it in black. If I had something more colorful, I would use it. I don't want to start straying into back into too familiar of a territory using a lot of grays and blacks because that goes against the uh, that goes against the mission statement of why I'm here Let's make sure I'm doing all this in camera as much as possible but there's all kinds of little grates and grills that this is a natural for accenting some of this I had managed to do with uh, other regular paints. Let's tilt that up a bit. But now that I've got this panel line stuff out, this is what it was made for. See, and now the sun is back out nice and strong. Weird. Weird world of weather. Sun. There goes the thunder again. There are a series of what look like windows on that are designed into this kit that I wish they had made clear because they look like they would have been really neat to have them all lit up. Certainly they've lit other windows. 
I don't know whether these were intended to be windows or not, but they are biggins. And now they're that's weird because it is I can hear the rain and it is bright sunshine means there's going to be a rainbow somewhere yeah I don't get a lot of chance to play with this accent panel accenting stuff this is a good opportunity all of these little bolt heads that uh, have uh, flat screwdriver heads to them that we can paint in now that we have this nice okay I was particularly having fun on the uh, the cup part I think I'm going to take a uh, now there's no, there's no law against using silver or chrome or any sort of accent color that way. That stuff all exists even though your uh, ship is not gray. So I'm going to try to do some of these pipes silver and see how it looks. wondering how much of this I should be doing now versus how much I should be waiting until I put this on the kit it's certainly easier to paint now but I could see where the paint might rub off easier when I'm doing the final assembly so you're just doing a Accenting a pipe here or there. Okay, we're coming up on the end of my work day today, and uh, it was a very fruitful day. This was a uh, this makes up for all of yesterday's uh, setbacks, I think. But uh, got the got the the brush up on the the ship up on the stand. I've got the lights lit. There's one last thing I want to look at, and that is these rings here. I want to repaint those. I'm not happy with that ivory color. I think more maybe a yellow brown. I wanted to see what color the lights were to uh, see how see which color of paint would look best against those blue lights and uh, A. I wanted to remember what color they were because I didn't. So uh, now that I know that they're blue I think we want to go with maybe a yellower color here and then maybe a brown wash over top of that and uh, I can finish gluing up this actually no I don't want to put these I don't want to glue these down until I've had a chance to touch up the paint on the uh, engine here and that's a lot easier to get to now than it would be after everything was glued in but I can go ahead and glue in the sides of the cup. No, nope, I can't do that yet either. I've got to paint those. After I paint those, then I can finish this gluing. And that'll be the, the place to end it for this evening. So let me get out the yellow brown paint and work on those rings. Okay, we've got a good stopping point for today. It's looking good and I don't want to jinx myself. Got it all together. This area here looks awfully wimpy because we don't have these parts on yet that'll help reinforce it but uh, some of this detail that's starting to pop out is really looking nice and uh, having all of the wiring done and not messing with that right now is particularly good let me see if I can find the end of this jack and plug it in see that will go that way Okay, be careful about that. There you go. 
Now we've got a switch right here that we can use to turn off and let's kill the overhead light so we can see what's going on. There we go. That's got a lot better lighting than most uh, kits that come with lights. I mean, I really like how that's that's doing the job right there. I like this up here particularly up in what's going up on up in the cup. But uh, there's your whoosh out the back. That's very well thought out as far as the uh, the lighting plan. I'm just doing some a little bit of the uh, silver uh, paint scrapes type of deal. So that's that's yeah that's at a good spot to leave it. Welcome back everybody. It is Wednesday and I'm on the horns of a dilemma. Um, and it's not very comfortable up, up here on the horns. This ship is almost done. We've got some decaling to do. We've got some tiny, uh, uh, we got this last bit of construction to do. But we're, we're, we're mostly done. And it's only Wednesday, so do I just take the rest of the week off? Or do I uh, try to find another two-day project that I can fill the lonely hours with? I don't know. That's where I'm at. But today we are going to be working with uh, some decals from uh, a source that you all know. A man, a lovely man by the name of Rick Sternbach. Now, for, if you don't know who Rick Sternbach is, I've said this before. If you don't know who Rick Sternbach is, what the heck are you doing on my channel? Um, Rick Sternbach is a production designer. He is the creator of many things that you know and see every day if you watch a lot of Trek. And uh, he has come up with a set of decals. Now, the, these are two of the different sets. He's got three sets that I'm aware of. One for uh, that is made specifically for the Voyager kit that I will not be using here. But these two kits, uh, this is called a widget sheet that is just a bunch of miscellaneous uh, doodahs that you can put on your ships. And this one, which is called uh, Imperial Warship Sheet 001. And this is, uh, well, you can see, there's some Klingon insignias. They're of various shades and colors. Some Klingon names and writings. And some uh, hatches and doorways and other Imperial symbols that come straight from the mind of Rick Starbuck. Again, I won't be using these on this particular ship, even though it is green. Even though it could go for it as a Klingon airbrush ship. Uh, I don't want to identify it as such. I want to use some of the stuff on this widget sheet. Now, granted, a lot of the stuff is made for a much, much smaller scale than what I've got. This uh, is reported to be like a 3,000 scale kit. So, um, it's, it's uh, even though these Iwata panels that go on here have text that is oh so tiny and very wee, but it is a text that goes on there. Um, the t if I were to put any of these decals on that had text, they would be miles high. I mean, look at the size of the windows. And that will give you a goal as to an idea how big any text would be. But I'm going to find a couple, three of these decals that I can use to spice up the uh, exterior here. And I've got one that I'm particularly wanting to use that's going to go right there, right here. So uh, let me get out the old bowl of water and uh, some Q-tips and all the accoutrements that you need for decaling. And then we're going to put just the spot here or there of some nice detailing and then finish the construction and um, we'll be done. Now last night uh, before I uh, closed up for the day, I did take uh, a coat of uh, satin or clear satin all over this so that it would be ready to receive decals today and so decaling it flat coating it and then the last bit of weathering and it will be done and uh, then I need to figure out what to do with the rest of my week starting to decal work and I've chosen some shapes from the widget sheet that uh, aren't really dependent on scale because the scale of this thing is such an odd beast that um, I didn't want to I didn't want to tie myself down to a, a text um, decals that had a lot of text on them so I'm just picking some some oddball shapes 
and then we'll see when when is enough I have a feeling that I don't want to do too many but I want to have enough on here let's see let's do this red honeycomb and I need to make sure that there are these are colors that will show up well against the uh, green of the hull so I like that one yeah I like that one next this is the nice thing about this is a completely clean slate because it's not from a movie, not from a book, not from a Shakespearean play or a or a uh, web series. It's not from anything. I can do whatever I want with it. You don't know how freeing that is until you've done a bunch of stuff that uh, is strictly one thing or the other. And Let's see, what does, where does this want to be? This one wants to be right up here. This was the one I had in mind to start with. And this is the, the one that kind of kicked it all off. So let's put that one down. Yeah, that works. And again, the white shows up wonderfully against the green here. Okay, these two are symmetrical, and I think they're going to go nicely on either section here. Don't want to get too busy with these, so it's kind of like weathering is. You need to... Uh, know when to say when and that's also a it's a double-edged sword when you are doing your own thing is that there's nobody to tell you when you've done too much you can you know if you're doing a if you're putting decals on an x-wing you obviously know when you've done too much something like this um too much is never too much And this thing about these decals is they are just like your professional decals in that they have carrier film just around the design. It's not like a, a homemade decal sheet where you are uh, having to cut real close to the designs and, and trim them real tight and all that. These are already done. Do some mopping up. Okay, I like that. And let's see something, something there. Again, I keep coming back to this. These designs that are circular, that have circular patterns to them. Alrighty, the uh, the gray decals aren't uh, popping as much as I would like so I'm sticking to the reds and the yellows those are really uh, and oddly enough the yellow ones might not stand out so much on a white starship say but they really do pop on the uh, the green here let me see if I can get a get a lamp in front of it so you can see what's going on but here this yellow pin uh, pinstripe really shows up in the uh, there we go off off of this uh, green so those are the ones and I've got plenty of opportunities to use the other ones on other ships so let's use the ones that I'm going to get the biggest bang for my buck now uh, on this one and then we can spread the the grays and the blacks to the others now there are also also some windows here window decals that I don't want to use because they don't match the style of the windows that are already uh, um, 
designed into the sh into the kit to begin with. So there's uh, there's there's no sense doubling up on something like that. Save that for a kit that may not have any windows. Well, it has been one of those busy days. Uh, took advantage of the time while I was waiting for this to uh, decals to dry to go out and mow a big chunk of the yard and I am tired now so uh, last thing we will do today is to put a quick uh, quick coating of flat primer or primer yeah let's finish let's cover all this up with primer flat clear finish on it and uh, then we will be ready for the final touches up and weathering but uh, yeah coming along quite nicely if I could do anything it might be to increase the contrast here between uh, the top color and the side right here I think that's getting a little lost everybody it's Thursday the gateway to the weekend and I really think I'm pretty much done with this so I'm going to take the rest of today off and maybe tomorrow and post a leisurely video but the last thing I want to do today is uh, well hell that means this is no good I was going to do a battery stress test on this to see how long it would stay lit because if you're going to put it in a convent if you're going to put it on competition it needs to uh, stay on the table and be lit for hours upon end so I wanted to test how long this this USB battery was going to last because I don't really want to run it to a uh, uh, run it to a, a wall ward although I could you could plug let see there it goes that was about 15 seconds 20 seconds and done now I can um, plug this into this adapter like I've done before and see if it will last any longer than that or if that is a design feature that it is only meant to last 15 seconds before it turns itself off um, all of the connections are done. They're all nice and solid and connected and all of that. And I've glued the uh, I've glued the ship to the base so that it doesn't twist on the base anymore. Because I was thinking that might make a, a, a weak battery or a weak wiring connection, and I don't mind that plug coming out the back. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, maybe the battery is just, maybe this USB battery is just no good. Um, gee, I hate to have to run that off a transformer, but that seems to be the way to do it. Now you can use those little plug adapters, USB plug adapters, so that I can plug the end of this straight into a, uh, a wall wart or a um, charging uh, plug. So I don't have to go to a, you know, a regular adapter and then have a bunch of, uh, of plugs and, and whatnots. But yeah, I think this battery was no good. I don't even know if you can get these anymore. These were a relic of a time long, long gone by. Um, well, nerds. If it looks like if I want to have this lit for any length of time, then I need to plug it into a wall. But all of the on the good side is I've got a flat coat on it. All of the uh, uh, decals, the, the uh, carrier film has disappeared on that, so they look good. I did take a, a second with some black, uh, flat black uh, paint and scorched up the end of the uh, tail rocket there because no matter what color your ship is, the exhaust is always the sooty exhaust is always going to scorch. And I did leave the the two uh, name plates on the side here I did leave the uh, color shift paint on those so those depending on how you look at it does shift between violet or deep purple and the uh, the green metallic green but that's a done thing now I had fantasies of you know running a hose down this and making a little tiny compressor as a companion piece I could have actually dressed this up but um, that was not going to be the way. I still, like I said yesterday, I still don't understand why they didn't use this opportunity to just run the power straight into here rather than there. It makes little to no sense to me. 
Hey kids, it's Friday and you'll notice I've not done a bloody thing since yesterday. Um, just when I was wondering about how I was going to finish out my week, I got a nice tasty sized order for templates that I need to... Uh, this is the time where everybody's getting in their orders before Wonderfest, so uh, extra time is being spent on that. So that's where we're going to be. I'm going to go grab the, uh, the uh, outer space uh, backdrop so we can put behind us and then we will be finished. And that's going to bring us to the end of this weird little build, the fun little build. For some reason, I feel like a, well, I did when I was in grade school and I had these really huge pencils that look like, I don't know, Lincoln Logs. It just feels like a really huge pencil. Uh, but a fun little kit. Took an informal poll around here and you will not be surprised to hear that this is Mr. Compressor's favorite model. Um, but uh, this is an answer to a, a question that I get an awful lot. And that is, uh, if you're gonna, people will ask me, if you were gonna start lighting a kit, where would you, where would you start? Well, lighting is, lighting is something that you will come to little by little. No one ever jumps into it right away. Um, but you know, it's one of those things that gives you the instant result that you like. I would recommend this kit for that reason. Uh, the lighting kit that comes with it is very simple very plug and play but look at the results you get look at all the different colors um, it's just very impactful I think it's it's a great starter kit for that now the kit itself is not cheap it's kind of expensive I mean it's uh, all models are becoming expensive these days but when you consider that your lighting kit is included in it and the USB cord is included with it and all you need to do is hook that up to a either a USB wall wart or plug it into your computer or whatever. It's a pretty good turnkey solution. And if you're looking at getting into lighting but you don't want to do a lot of soldering, well, there's no soldering to be done here. It's all plug and play. So I would recommend it on those grounds. I mean, it's a unique subject. I uh, The fact that it's not from a feature film or, you know, a, a TV show means you can do it any color you want. And I hope you won't mind the... Uh, the liberties I took with this color to make it more like the the ships in those books of old that I showed you from the at the beginning of the week but I think it's a great place to jump in it's got all the benefits of a Bandai kit but none of the limitations uh, sometimes a Bandai kit can be too limiting uh, but this has all of the ease of construction plus it has the added uh, the added benefit of having the lighting kit coming in and with it so if you can find this kit in your in your uh, local hobby shop or if you can order it online it's i think it's well worth your time i, I can say it i this along with the uh, the cup of noodle uh, i like an unusual kit this is an unusual kit is it you know this is not uh it does not have nacelles it does not have uh x wings on it it does not have lasers on it it is it is its own animal and i i gotta respect it for that very reason so uh, that's the Architect Iwata Special Edition. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, next week, who knows what we're going to be getting back into. Wonderfest is coming up. I know I keep harping on this. Wonderfest is coming up. I've got very special guests coming into town to tour the Aztec Temple before Wonderfest. So um, a lot of my, well, a, lot, a lot of this week was spent starting to clean and move around and Tetris things and and uh, make way and make room. So uh, don't know what the model will be for next week yet. Join me then we'll find out together. So until then, you be good. Be good to yourself. Be good to your, your friends, your family. Be good to your enemy. It pisses them off. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.